Welcome everyone to today's performance clinic, AI assisted log and event monitoring to simplify Kubernetes and multi-cloud operations with Dynatrace. My name is Andy Grebner and with me, Mikkel from uh, Dynatrace in Gdansk. Hello. Hello, hello Andy, hello everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, happy to share with you uh, today some exciting news regarding the upcoming enhancements in Dynatrace uh, around the log monitoring uh, with the focus on the Kubernetes and multi-cloud operations. Uh, so what I will do today is to share, uh, share infos about the few changes we recently delivered, uh, how this can be used to monitor your Kubernetes clusters, to monitor your uh, cloud services, uh, and after a few slides, I will also do the demo on my on my environment. So, so you also have the feeling how it works uh, end to end. Perfect. And before I let you run with it, just as a reminder, because I see some people just joined, if you have any questions and you're live, please use the Q&A feature. I will moderate. If you watch this in a recording, you have our names. I'm pretty sure you find a way to get a hold of us. Or if you have registered for the webinar, you can just reply to that confirmation email and the questions will also find our way. But now, Mikkel, it's all up to you and uh, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Andy. So let me start uh, with the basic introduction and uh, setting the fundamentals one more time. There are three most important pillars of the intelligent observability built on top of the topology that Dynatrace deliver, behavior, metadata, all of the context. And by these pillars, we of course need to start with the tracing, with the metrics, and also with the logs. So there is there is no observability without the logs or without the traces or without the metrics. All these three things need to live together in ideally in one single tool that can everybody can then can access. And while I focus today on the logs, what is important to to, to bolt that we should think about the logs and the events, in fact, as a stream of the data coming to our observability system, coming from different sources. And this source is, of course, the standard thing, which is log file being uh, written by the uh, by the specific process, process that it's run on standalone or inside Docker or maybe in the Kubernetes. And this log file needs to be picked up by the specific agent one agent from Dynatrace, of course, uh, but also logs originate from different sources like cloud services. Uh, this can be also events as well. So let's think about the logs as the stream of the data arriving to the Dynatrace from different sources. And I already mentioned the events uh, and the question that I'm asked plenty of times, what is the difference between the logs and the events? Uh, and in fact, open telemetry defined this pretty well. Open telemetry tried to standardize not only the tracing and metrics, but also the logs and events. And under the hood, logs and events are exactly the same animals. Yeah. So if you think about the Java application log, just the standard uh, Spring Boot log written with log4j, you always have few basic parts of the log. The timestamp, so basically when specific event happened. Uh, then set of the attributes describing the event itself. The basic one is the severity, info, debug, uh, whatever here. The most important part, which is of course the content, body, message. And so basically the long uh, information that is being handled in the local message uh, that allows you to troubleshoot, that allows you to understand the context that, that brings the intelligence uh, as a part of the log event. And of course, there are a set of the attributes describing the producer of the event. So basically the topology context. And think about the Dynatrace, we have our entity model. This is of course the part of the, uh, of the log message attribute, but there are also other attributes that describe the producer of the, uh, of the log. Name of the application, name of the process, uh, instance ID, EC2 instance ID, cloud region. All these things that allows you to understand where this data is coming from. And of course, Java is just an example. All other uh, frameworks or languages approach the topic very similar. Yeah, no matter if it's a .NET, Node.js, or, or uh, even the Lambda uh, and the serverless environments. And take a look uh, on the bottom, the Kubernetes event which is not named log. This is the uh, this is the naming convention from the Kubernetes community that 
on purpose name at the event, it's being produced by the uh, Kubernetes control plane and customers can pull it to the API. I will focus on this in a few seconds. However, one more time, you see, while this is already structured information, this is kind of JSON provided by the Kubernetes API, we see exactly the same types of information. Timestamp, when it happened, what kind of event, it was normal in this case, what was the reason, so basically kind of operation, where it happened, ID of the specific uh, specific pod, and kind of message. So this is very similar. And under the hood, all of these logs and events coming from the Kubernetes, from the cloud services, from your uh, CI CD systems should be treated equally. And of course, should be accessible from one single observability tool. Moving forward, uh, on purpose, I'm not going to focus on the Kubernetes monitoring uh, as end-to-end -end in Dynatrace. We already have a, a huge set of the functionalities that allows customers to, to monitor their Kubernetes workloads. And no matter if this is uh, cloud services Kubernetes or this is on-prem, uh, in, in a few minutes, I will do demo of simple Minikube deployed on the EC2. But we see more and more adoption for the Kubernetes. Uh, it helps drive digital transformation foster collaboration, break up losses, but getting more and more complex. That's why the, the good observability for the Kubernetes end-to-end, -end, including the application monitoring, including the infrastructure monitoring, is a must-have at some moment. And of course, Dynatrace brings the answers to all of your problems. Today, we focus mostly on the log monitoring in context of the Kubernetes. And of course, uh, we provide the full stack monitoring for the Kubernetes. So we can easily deploy one agent to do the full stack instrumentation. Recently, we've delivered the improvements uh, for the Kubernetes deployment via the operator. It's really simple right now. I tested myself a few days ago preparing for this performance clinic. In few lines of code or on the command line, you can deploy one agent into your Kubernetes clusters. And you can also deploy the Kubernetes API monitoring. So basically uh, monitoring control plane of the, uh, of the uh, Kubernetes. What brings the one agent? It's, it's obvious, full stack monitoring, end-to-end -end tracing in context of the topology with the application monitoring on top of this. And let's uh, stop right now on the important context of the Kubernetes, which is, of course, the login architecture. And this is kind of input before we move forward to the uh, demo flow to, to discussing how all of these logs uh, can be used uh, across different environment, environments. So Kubernetes, once you start the pod, the recommended approach to write the logs is push the logs to standard out, standard error. That's like a recommended approach and basically one of the uh, basic approaches that Dynatrace support out of, the, out of the box. What it really means is that the logs being written by the application inside the, the pods to the standard out are being redirected by the kubelet, primary node agent, to log files on the node level. Yeah. So basically the streams, this approach via the Kubernetes log files works very simple. The kubelet, Bring, keeps the keeps the log and redirect the node level. And of course, the where it goes, the, the destination file on the node level, it's different on different uh, container runtimes. Yeah? So, so for the Docker, there is a symlink creation. For container D or cryo, there are different um, uh, destinations where the, uh, where the file is landing. Uh, important to understand is the, the Kubernetes API do not support log driver configuration for Docker engine. So things that you might be familiar with if you run the standalone Docker is that you can provide the log driver. The default log driver is of course standard out, but I can use the Fluent D uh, for example. In this case, the Docker will redirect the logs directly to the Fluent D daemon. This is however not possible in the Kubernetes deployments. That's just the simplest illustration of the basic approach to uh, log monitoring inter inside the Kubernetes. Of course, I'm covering right now the data acquisition part, which is really important. So here we have the architecture using a node level logging agent. And of course, ideally 
this is one agent that works as a login agent, exactly the same agent that do the full stack monitoring. No need to deploy an additional binary. We have the log file deploy on the node level. There might be a third party system that uh, makes sure that this file is being rotated, log rotate. And we have dedicated uh, pod inside which the full entity or one agent is running. And of course, this agent sent data to the observability backend. This is Dynatrace, of course. And here we have full support for the Docker runtimes with the one agent. Other container runtimes are scheduled later this calendar year. But we also support the FluentD as a logging agent. So if you already have the logging agent working in your environment and you are willing to switch to Dynatrace, you can also utilize existing logging drivers. And FluentD, FluentDB are kind of recommended uh, logging drivers from the Kubernetes. But of course, one agent de deployment will bring you the full context. Other approach is to have the FluentD as a logging agent, sidecar kind of uh, approach where we have the one pod with the two containers running inside, uh, not recommended. However, if you have such a setup in place, we still got you covered. Then Dynatrace acts as a locking backend uh, here. And of course, Kubernetes, Kubernetes community also perfectly described this uh, approach. As Andy mentioned, links should be shared later on or, or right now. And the second thing, which is also utilized by many different uh, uh, customers, in fact, agnostic from the Kubernetes, is writing logs directly from my application to the logging backend to Dynatrace. Uh, and here's the simplest uh, example where for the Java, I have log4j application and I've created the HTTP appender that sends log directly to Dynatrace API ingestion. So basically a situation where the application writes logs directly to, the, to Dynatrace without storing data into the file. What's really important to, to understand is also how Kubernetes enrich the data with the metadata. The pods, namespaces, all different entities that exist in the Kubernetes ecosystem uh, can be enriched with different labels, with different names. All of this create your, your infrastructure, create your context, and the logs that are streaming to observability platform from the one agent or from the third party data shipper should be also and reach with this metadata. And Kubernetes community discovered this need pretty quickly and right now provides the two basic approaches to grab the pods or namespaces uh, metadata. The other downward API, so basically the pod will have access to environment variables or to specific files on which the information about the pod exists. Without this, the application running inside the pod have no idea about the pod labels at all. And the second approach is to grab the data via Kubernetes API. And what I will show in a few seconds, the FluentD approach with the enrichment utilize exactly this approach. The FluentD knows the pod ID, so knows from which pods the logs are coming and can query Kubernetes API to grab the information necessary to enrich the messages. And of course, the, the FluentD needs to have access to this Kubernetes API. So basically, there needs to be proper service account uh, created for, for this, as the API is not accessible by default from the pods itself. Hey, uh, Mikael, maybe just one quick interruption, if you can quickly go back, uh, because there's one question that came in and just a clarification. So what you're explaining here on the left side, the question is, you talk about pod metadata via, via variables or volume mounts. Are these general best practices from Kubernetes or is this something that Dynatrace no, This is like with? a general practices from the Kubernetes. This is uh, two approaches to grab the metadata that Kubernetes prepared for us. Mm -hmm. so basically, anyone can utilize this. If you have like a uh, different needs or kind of do-it-yourself project, you can properly set up the environment variables on your daemon set. Mm -hmm. And thanks to this, under this uh, environment variable, you will have access to the labels of the pod. So this is approached via the downward API. Mm -hmm. Application living inside the specific pod can grab this metadata. Mm -hmm. And here's the approach via API. So 
application living in the third party pod or second or, or other pods can access the whole picture. So, so the fluently living in one of the pods can get the information about all the pods in my Kubernetes cluster, of course, mm -hmm. with the proper, uh, proper uh, privileges. Perfect. And just as a reminder, if anybody else has questions, please use the Q&A feature of Zoom and also watch out for the chat window because I am posting links like the one that is currently on it, the Fluentd metadata plugin also in the chat. Right, but now back to you, Michael. Yeah, thanks. Events that I already uh, mentioned, uh, they are already available in Dynatrace. So Dynatrace, after connecting to the Kubernetes cluster, uh, after setting up the monitoring, will pull constantly the events and provide these events in context of the topology. Of course, powering Davis AI root cause analysis, of course, being available for the open data exploration. These events bring the important information about the cluster life cycle. So basically, we know exactly what's really happening, where, why some nodes weren't, where scheduled, why it couldn't be startup. So this is really essential for, for Dynatrace to have the full context in, in place. And we also have some, some improvements scheduled here as well. We'll be able to show, showcase this in a few minutes. So I probably should mention about this at, at the very beginning uh, as one of the biggest improvements that we are delivering right now is what we name log ingestion API. And that's exactly the API that is being used by the Fluent team. Uh, the API that works via HTTP layer, TCP UDP layer will come later on to support syslog or syslog. Uh, and that's exactly the API that can be used to push data from agentless integrations, from the cloud services that I will comment in a few, uh, few seconds, uh, from third party data shippers like FluentD, FluentB, which are open sourced. And this API is aware of the topology, so you can bring the topology context as a part of your data, but it's not must have. If you have just the simple text with the timestamp or even without the timestamp, this will be still compliant with our schema. We also make sure that this is fully compatible with the open telemetry approach. As already mentioned, open telemetry is doing a great job around the observability standardization, also for the logs and the events. And we are also delivering right now the dedicated uh, integrations for the FluentD, for the Logstash open source tools that will simplify the integration process. So uh, I've just covered uh, the Kubernetes approach where we have the Kubernetes cluster that we want to monitor. This can be the on-prem Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this can be also cloud services based Kubernetes that are, are delivered by the different cloud vendors as a service. But we also are delivering right now cloud services logs integration, which is essential for the monitoring, for the infrastructure monitoring and understanding what is happening in your cloud environments where you have your workloads deployed. And this events and logs ingestion API might be used exactly with different cloud vendors to bring events from the clouds that allows you to have single tool Dynatrace to have the observability. And one more time, we are talking here about the events, CloudTrail audit events, Cloud Health events, serverless logs. So if you have a Lambda deployed in your stack and would like to push this Lambda logs to Dynatrace, We've got you covered. And of course, cloud services logs, databases, elastic load balancers, all different components that produce the observability as a stream of the logs. And right now, Dynatrace is ready to consume this data as well and put this data in topology context. And here is a good example that if we think about the cloud services integration, there are different services producing the observability data. CloudTrail event that allows you to understand who, when, and what kind of change made into your ecosystem, which of course might impact the performance, might impact the availability of your services. Pretty huge JSON that needs to be uh, properly digested. Or AWS Lambda execution log, which in the fact is just the blob with the set of the information, with the ID of the request, and of course the timestamp. 
And what we are delivering right now is exactly the integration with three major cloud vendors, AWS, Azure, GCP, with different log forwarders, functions that can be deployed in your, in your cloud environment and connected with the different cloud services logs. What is really important to mention is that the API, the whole approach that I will demo in a few minutes is really cloud agnostic. If you have workloads and all three clouds, you'll be able to bring the observed data. Because all of these three clouds have the similar approach to streaming observability data via the push. So basically pushing to Dynatrace via the Lambda function, Kinesis Firehose, Azure Event Hub, or GCP functions. So basically, Dynatrace acts as a receiver of the log streams that put this data in context of the topology. Okay, so I will do small stop here as this is the perfect moment to, to do the live demo. And if there are any questions right now, I'll be more than happy to answer. Yeah, I think you will probably show it in the demo uh, and you also have it covered in the slides, but one of the questions came in. So what do I exactly need to do to ingest fluent D logs? Okay, so to ingest fluent D logs, all you need to do is to have the proper setup on your Dynatrace and yeah, the timeline I can provide the shorty for the stars and for the managed to have this new version of the uh, ingestion and uh, revamped version of the log monitoring. And then once you have the API ready, all you need to do is just set up FluentD and configure the Dynatrace output plugin for the FluentD. Mm -hmm. And maybe that will become a little bit more obvious during the demo as mm -hmm. I also have this during uh, example for this. Perfect. Then let's go to the demo. And then if more questions come up, folks, make sure to use the Q&A feature of Zoom. OK, you should see my uh, browser. That's my dev environment. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Of course, so let me start with my Kubernetes cluster. Funny situation, I have one problem right, right now as I'm running out of the space. So starting with the really good example how Davis was able to pick up the problem. So basically right now uh, there is a low disk space. So probably I will have a problem to schedule new um, uh, new pod on this if I would like to scale up something or deploy some new workload. Thank you, Davis, for this. And that's exactly the Kubernetes observability. After deploying the API integration, I see information about the cluster utilization, cluster workloads, all different pods running here, and also the events that I see here exactly. Started container, pulling image, created pod, scaling app, all the things that are essential for me to understand if everything is run smoothly. Uh, nothing really problematic uh, here, good. What I've done already here is, of course, I've deployed one agent via operator. I'm not going to cover this uh, as it will take a little bit more time. That's really well defined and documented in our documentation. And what you see right now is exactly the results of the one agent being deployed. So we are discovering automatically zero configuration. The, all the pods running here. And of course, part of the pods, part of these containers are default blocks building the Kubernetes uh, uh, ecosystem. So we have API server, we have control manager, uh, we have some other operators running here, like my own Dynatrace operator. And I also have deployed the FluentD on one of the pods. But what's really important is that with the one agent approach, out of the, the box for the Docker runtime, we are also discovering the logs. So what I see right now is exactly a simple link to the new log viewer that will display me the logs from this API server. So let's click it out. Yeah, and what I see right now is exactly logs from my Kubernetes that are arriving to Dynatrace without the configuration. And what I see exactly is the new log viewer. So in the recent months, we revamped our approach to the log consumption, exploration, troubleshooting on top of the logs. And what you see right now is the improved exploration view, which is built around idea of the log streams coming from different sources. 
and this is exactly the uh, etcd the, uh, uh, the api server uh, process if i clean it up i will see the logs from my whole environment from whole components that are being observed right now and let's take a look on the yeah i'm right now narrowing down to this specific uh, kubernetes cluster i see all these different components running here my active gate i also have the logs of the one agent because that's my dev environment i turned on some specific debug flags now if i would like to see all the errors from the last six hours yeah you, we see right now there's 86 errors out of this one produced by the operator let's take a look on this error yeah so we see exactly there is some kind of exception couldn't pull the the specific uh, secret that's probably a moment where i should act where i should check it out why this specific process is not working and of course, the whole new concept of the user and uh, log exploration allows you to do full text search as well. So I can right now easily filter down. I can easily search by the specific attributes. I can easily see also the logs for the specific sources. So here is the Kubernetes. Uh, this is something not related to Kubernetes virus syslog coming from my different agent integration. And one more time, just to, to, to make it bold, this is the moment where one agent is working on the Kubernetes cluster and doing the auto discovery of the log files. One of the workloads that I've deployed is just the Postgres, nothing really happening inside here, no application is querying. However, I can easily see logs produced by this Postgres as Postgres is writing to the standard out. And we see, yeah, system is ready to accept connections. Okay, so what about logs brought by the FluentD on the same cluster? And that's exactly this animal. I've also deployed the FluentD. So if I open the view on the post, I see also the FluentD, which is deployed in the specific namespace. I've deployed on purpose on the cube system because this fluent D uh, pod need to have access to the API. Uh, the configuration for this uh, uh, is done via demo set. So I've configured the, the DC demo set approach. Uh, that's something that we will also later on provide as a out of the box config files for the Kubernetes as Dynatrace. But what's really important here is that this is the demo set definition including the config maps. So the config map is exactly the configuration of the FluentD in Kubernetes environment with the exact information which logs should be tailed and how to enrich the data. So here we are using very nice the Kubernetes uh, transformer that puts additional metadata like namespaces, like, uh, like pod names. And what I can see right now, going back to Dynatrace console, I mark all these logs coming from the uh, Fluent that deployed my Kubernetes with the specific tag service name Fluent Kubernetes EC2. And right now, I see all the data coming from the Fluent integration as well. Yeah. So additionally, I see not only the container name, the cluster name on one single cluster, but also the pod names, namespaces names, pod IDs as well. So I can easily see which pod exactly produced specific event. And we are also working on providing the topology connection for the logs being written by the FluentD as well. To have like a stand single approach to data connection. Yeah, so basically, this is the moment where the observability data is being brought by the FluentD integration. Hey, Mikael, uh, just two questions. One that I want to just clarify, because I think you mentioned it earlier in the presentation already. Uh, the question that came in is Docker log is supported by Dynatrace, but it seems container D logs are not yet supported. Uh, but can you confirm that this is going to be supported? And I think you mentioned it earlier. So right now, only Docker runtime is supported by the one agent log module. And roadmap items is support for the cryo and container D. 
perfect. But what you can do, obviously, already, what you show here with Fluent D, this is just uh, independent of the one agent. Yes. Just, yep. Yep. So, of course, this is workaround that will work smoothly right now. Mm -hmm. However, we want to simplify the the we want to simplify the configuration also for the different runtimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and of course, so what we know from the Kubernetes community, from the Kubernetes, is that Docker is deprecated as the runtime. Uh, mm -hmm. And basically, the support for different runtimes is a must have, and that's also the priority for us. Mm -hmm. And then one more thing, uh, the log viewer that you're showing here, is this a capability that is behind a preview program, or when is this coming for general availability? On the SaaS, it's coming to GA right now. On the managed, it's scheduled uh, uh, in CQ3, in calendar quarter three. And on the SaaS, it's going to GA right now. And if you have an, if you would like to give it a try, if you'd like to test it out, please contact your D1 or work with Dynatrace support team as there is some kind of migration path. That's why uh, customers will have to work with Dynatrace to have this uh, enabled for their SaaS tenant. Perfect. Thank you. And as you can see, maybe one last thing for people that are asking questions, this is truly live. You can ask questions and you'll get them answered. So make sure to keep these questions coming. But now back to you, after you have your sip, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what you see now exactly is the open data exploration on top of the Kubernetes logs uh, or logs brought by the Fluentd from my Kubernetes environment. Everything that I've done here works in the context of the time frame. Everything that I've done here uh, can be automated via API. So we have the open API under the hood and some nice things like distribution numbers uh, showing how much events match my search criteria. So exactly this four, four, 471 uh, log errors here. I can also do the full text search. And I have some advanced querying capabilities where I can do the, uh, the or joins or find all the errors that are not warns, for example. So some good things are coming also here. Uh, from the perspective of the cloud services integration, we are also delivering integration for the major cloud vendors. Uh, on purpose, I will uh, present this on the third party uh, uh, environment where I have the free cloud vendors integration. I will focus more on the AWS. I'm kind of AWS guy and showcase you how it works. What you see exactly here is exactly the same cloud log viewer with the logs from the GCP, with the logs from the AWS, and this time frame no logs from the Azure. And what I can drill down here is, of course, find the logs for the specific uh, producers. And here are the logs coming from my Lambda function. I have the basic information about the duration, uh, memory used. But important thing is that we also have the topology connection here in place. And by topology connection, I mean relationship to other observability data, to CloudWatch uh, metrics uh, being pushed or uh, pulled for the specific demo function. And also later on, the full stack monitoring of this function delivered via the one agent Lambda extension. Yeah, so that's exactly perfect example of the cloud service monitoring, being monitoring full stack with the cloud metrics, cloud logs, and full stack monitoring. Yeah, so seamless integration between different data streams. And Mika, uh, just to, to clarify, what you just showed, the linkage from a log entry to the entity model in Dynatrace, what is called Smartscape, this is something that works here out of the box. It also, um, you said, for the Fluentd integration, we also have the linkage already. No, for the the one agent integration. This is right? for the for the one agent integration. integration? CloudWatch yeah. log group integration, and we try to have the best coverage possible are mm -hmm. as there are different type of the services and while for now the full coverage the smartscape connection is not in place for all the services for which the logs can be brought but that's our goal mm -hmm. and lambda is a perfect example of one of the things that works where we have the topology connection in place mm -hmm. perfect great and i just see somebody raised their hand if you have a questions please 
use the Q and A feature of um, Zoom and uh, type it in, and I will then pass the question over to Mikael. Go ahead. Okay, so so from the technical perspective, from the architectural concept, how the streaming of the logs works, let me focus on AWS, is exactly via Firehose. And Firehose that can be deployed, configured uh, with Dynatrace, we provide the CLI scripts, CloudFormation scripts for, for this. So this is uh, one more time, two lines of the, um, uh, of the command for you, will be deployed and dedicated Lambda function that will stream data to Dynatrace will be deployed. So here, this works via a simple approach that Kinesis trigger the Lambda and the Lambda send data to Dynatrace to the specific tenant via the ingestion API. And thanks to this, the logs can be seen in Dynatrace. Logs from different cloud services, as this is not only Lambda, this might be also the cloud trail. This might be also other uh, logs from the GCP or, or, or Azure as well. Okay, so let me uh, let me present uh, a little bit how how I can power the Davis with the alerting on top of the log streams. How I can have the custom alerting on top of the log streams as well, and this can be done via two ways. One of this is already available on the production. That's exactly the transformation to the time series from the logs. So let's say I want to be notified about any kind of problem with my Dynatrace operator. That's why I will create the time series. I can put additional dimensions and dimensions that can be used later on to have the split by in place. I will show this in a few seconds. And of course, right now, whenever there is a problem coming from Dynatrace operators with the status error, I will see this on the metric level. And of course, these metrics are standard time series in Dynatrace. So I can have the custom alerting on top of this, either the static threshold, or I can have also the baselining here as well. And here, for example, I have two time series that counts number of logs produced by the specific PGIs and host split by the sources, but also the metric that counts errors split by topology, uh, topology context. Uh, so that's also right now available uh, on SaaS for, for you to use. And thanks to this definition, I can see this metrics on the dashboard and I can also have the custom alerting in place for this. So let me go to the metrics. And that's exactly right now, the graph illustrating number of errors split by the host. And of course I can use different visualization types. I can have a dash, a da, uh, put it on the dashboard. I can have the table. I can do the split by the additional source or just by the source, which in context of the uh, one agent is the log file. Yeah. Uh, and the next thing is, of course, the alerting on top of this. And this can be done via the custom alerting. And that's exactly the definition of the custom alert for the log-based time series with the static threshold, but I can also utilize auto-adaptive baseline. Yeah, and really nice illustration. What will be the distribution of the alerts, potential alerts for the last uh, 12, 24 hours or seven days? And we see exactly that there was a problem yesterday evening when, with one of the, my components. And of course, right now I can use the auto-adaptive baseline. So, so there will be some time needed to detect the, the baseline. Of course, all, all the metrics might fluctuate. There might be some um, specific weekly or daily uh, patterns. And just to show you 
the problem being raised on top of the log-based metric. Exactly the high number of errors. That's how I define the name here. That happened yesterday evening. We see that the problem was on my Kubernetes dashboard. So I'm really interested in what was the problem. And one just with one click, I can see all the errors that caused the problem to rise. Yeah. And it seems some problem of metric label not set. And that's keep being written by the uh, by the dashboard all time long. That is pretty powerful. This is I know you you make it seem so easy because there's like just a couple of configuration screens, but knowing that you can ingest all of these logs from all different sources and then first of all getting a metric on the number of log entries that meet a specific criteria, then leveraging the adaptive baselining if you want to, and then getting an alert that will bring you exactly back to uh, the, the logs and obviously then additional information in case, you know, something else happened on that underlying machine, like high CPU or something like that, I guess, right? This is all automatically there. Exactly. But we do not stop here from the monitoring and alerting, automotive baselining, everything, of course, in the context of the topology. So Davis is, will be able to pick up this time series and figure out any kind of change point uh, mm -hmm. in the flow of this metric. What mm -hmm. we also plan to deliver, and that's not part of the G8 that is happening right now, but it's uh, two or three months from now to be delivered, is also FDI, the Davis events on top of the log events. Mm -hmm. I don't want to show the configuration as this is subject to change, uh, but that's exactly the problematic event raised by the Davis based on the log. What we see exactly here is kind of the event created without the time series transformation. And we see not only um, specific problem on the log level, but we also see additional metadata that we can extract from the log event itself. And of course, this uh, these problems will be used by the Davis during the root cause analysis or will trigger Davis to execute root cause analysis. So basically, uh, our AI power will be able to understand the intelligence from the logs as well. But that's the roadmap item, something that we are developing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I've showcased the basic workflow and to end use cases uh, with the alerting, with the monitoring on top of this, uh, how we approach the log exploration in context of the topology right now. Of course, what is important here is that we also want to make it work with the management zones. So if you are uh, familiar with the management zones approach to separating the, uh, the environment across your different business units, we also have you covered. This is exactly my management zone where only specific active gate logs are being visible. So way many different uh, additional uh, improvements uh, here for you. And I already mentioned also the Kubernetes events. Uh, this is also one of the things for which you would like to have the open data exploration, which would like to have also this kind of uh, baselining detection of the problems, anomaly detection. And I'm also happy to share one of the planet improvements for the Kubernetes monitoring is open data exploration for the Kubernetes as well. What you see right now uh, is also under development, no estimated time or variable. However, one of the uh, valid feedbacks received in the recent months was about the Kubernetes events consumption, possibility to digest into the Kubernetes events, to grab them, slice and dice, and search by the specific content. And what you see right now is a brand new integration that we are working on that allows customers to see the events and slice and dice by the specific types. So here's a simple example. Please give me all events from the Kubernetes API with the reason killing. And of course, in topology context, one more time, this is the, the most powerful as we see exactly which Kubernetes not cause this problem on which cluster, which cloud application. So this will bring additional open data exploration possibility. And of course, alerting works on this the same way. Uh, and the approach to logs and events consumption 
is being unified right now in Dynatrace, and we try to fulfill the, the open data exploration use cases. So this is one of the uh, great improvements coming later this calendar year as well. Hey, that's just one question exactly to what you just said with the example with killing or any other of the event reasons. Um, so that means it's possible that you can use then baseline alerting on, let's say, an anomaly of a particular event by Kubernetes cluster, because Kubernetes cluster can be one of the dimensions. So that yep. means you can create a metric that says, I want to know the number of event type X, like killing, split by Kubernetes cluster, and then please give me uh, an alert in case you know something abnormal happens. Exactly. That's exactly where we are where, where we are going. Yeah. And this is still on the early development phase, uh, but I'm happy to share the very first uh, results of the uh, of this development. And that's exactly how it will work. So not only you can see the events in Dynatrace, automatically pull it via API after deploying uh, the Dynatrace operator. But out of the box, you can do the anomaly detection. You'll be able to create the time series, put it on your dashboard, have the custom alerting split by the different attributes of the Kubernetes event. This mm -hmm. fulfills the observability approach for the Kubernetes environment. There's one more question, if you quickly have time for one more. Yep. Um, you obviously talked about the API to push data, but what about API for pooling the data out of Dynatrace? Is there also a, a read API? Yeah, so in fact, everything that I've done right now is done via API. And you can utilize this open API to grab the data out of the Dynatrace. Of course, there is some pagination happening under the hood, so you have to scroll between different results. For the last 24 hours, there is more than 1 million log events pushed to this. And of course, every log event might be more and less heavy. So, so this is not like a download the file for now. This is like a do it yourself approach and consuming the, the API, uh, which is standard REST API. Mm -hmm. Well, and I guess this would be then under the environments v2 API somewhere to be found. Yep. Yeah. I can even, I should have open. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the API Explorer. Mm -hmm. That's the API to push the data in. Mm -hmm. And that's the API to grab the data out and also grab the aggregation out. Thank you. So that's pretty all from my side. Uh, I believe we are good on time. Yeah. Happy to answer all the questions if something is not clear. and. No, I think, uh, I mean, I've already walked through some of the questions. Folks, if you have more questions, please, now is the time to add in more questions. Thanks for those that already came in. Also make sure that you check out the chat because in the chat, I already posted all of the links. Plus, uh, Mika, when you earlier said in the beginning, right, how to deploy the one agent, I also have a performance clinic uh, with Alois Meyer on that. I have pasted that already. So in case you are new on Dynatrace, with Kubernetes, there's other material out there uh, that gets you started on Kubernetes monitoring. Um, one question that just comes in, what is the data retention for so, log analytics? So for now, the data retention is fixed for the 35 days, can be changed globally on the tenant level. And one of the improvements that we have scheduled uh, on the roadmap is data retention definition per log stream. So you can uh, retain your errors from the production for longer or, or and keep the debug logs from pre-prod, from staging uh, for shorter retention period. So that's even more than just from a log stream. This is basically based on log category, right? You can say, right, I want to have keep errors longer from a particular yeah. moment. Yeah. As I mentioned, this is the, the roadmap item. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, then one other question that I had uh, for Fluentd, if I Google for Fluentd, I know you brought up the Fluentd plugin uh, that you posted or the, the Fluentd plugin Kubernetes metadata filter. Uh, there's, a, there's also on the Dynatrace OSS GitHub repository um, a couple of projects. So yeah, here we go. This is the Fluentd yeah, plugin. So please check out uh, the links should be probably in the slide deck or uh, if not, please check out uh, Dynatrace OSS. And there's a Fluentd plugin that can be used. Uh, Fluent, 
Dynatrace Fluent D plugin that can be easily used, installed uh, into your uh, um, Gem repository and used with Dynatrace API. And that's exactly API. One of the things that, that will be shortly delivered on the SaaS as well, the, the Open Ingestion API. Awesome. And this nice uh, metadata, it's also open sources by, uh, created by one of the uh, Kubernetes fans. In fact, this metadata plugin deliver additional metadata. Yeah, so just type Kubernetes FluentD metadata and you will find easily this plugin that can be used with the FluentD. Of course, this is agnostic from Dynatrix. Mm -hmm. And then this question, I was just waiting for it because it's always coming at every performance clinic, the pricing. Mm -hmm. Is it still one line of log equals one DDU? Or I know you are, we're not in sales, both neither of us, but still like a high level overview. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not one line, it's one log event. So we are not counting number of lines. Uh, we are calculating number of events ingested because, yeah. This guy is two lines, but I also have some long uh, JSONs here. So this guy is just small chunk of the D DDU, 0 0.0005, if I'm correct, uh, chunk of the of the DDU. So these are not the lines, the physical lines. These are counter of the events. Mm -hmm. well, there's one other question coming in. Can you go back, I guess, back in time through uh, with seeing an issue with an API or provide a link for it. Uh, can you go back through with seeing an issue with an API? Um, I guess, Michelle, I'm not sure if I fully understand, but for the problems. Maybe, let's yeah. get there. Yeah. Too high number of errors, cube API server, maybe this one. This is a Because you can you can query uh, problems that are detected with the API, and then maybe the question is, in the problem context, you should be able then to also get the link to the logs, mm -hmm. right? Because the root cause um, or the, the impacted component on that problem ticket uh, includes exactly all the metadata that you see here, and then you can easily create that query string, I guess, right? It's a very simple. Probably, thing. yes. I will have to double check. I believe mm -hmm. I understand the, the, the use case here is that uh, so you would like to grab uh, the query that is under the hood here, so exactly get a, a exact problematic logs. Um, probably that's possible, but I will have to double check Yeah, because mm -hmm. here we see the nice looking link on the user interface. And the question is, if this is exactly the metadata of the problem. Mm -hmm. So then I can easily narrow down to the specific logs and grab these logs and send to the third party data system, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, one other question that came in, if I have a log with a date format error, are there any alternatives that I have? So mm. assuming that the log, the format error comes out of the app that is writing the timestamp. So, uh, I believe we are touching here some, some kind of limitation though that we had in the past that once the timestamp format is not recognized, the log file will not be picked up. And we also have solution for this. So basically improve the agent uh, is able to recognize timestamp in case it's not able to recognize timestamp, it will put now. So, so we have the solution for this as well. Okay, so I guess uh, hopefully this answers the question. Rodrigo, if you can let me know whether this answers your question. Basically, fixing a behavior that we had in the past where we ignored certain log entries in case the timestamp couldn't be read. If I understand this correctly, Mikael, then yeah. we have a solution I, I for this that, now. That was the issue. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah, I would say we'll keep it open for another minute to see if more questions are coming in. Uh, until that point, I know you you don't want or you cannot give an, a precise uh, lookout for timing, but there's a lot of things planned, it seems, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff already there and currently being rolled out. I really love that this is currently going out uh, as we speak, right? Yep. For SAS. Um, and the other uh, things that you mentioned are also exciting to come. I'm really, I'm really excited about what you showed is that the linking of the log event with the entity model is so powerful. 
it's just amazing that the most difficult part as well uh, 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 but yeah we try to have this coverage that this is our core unique offering uh, basically to fix a lot of problems mm -hmm. and it's not only from the open troubleshooting or open data exploration but that's also the context for davis to do the root cause analysis yeah. so it, it not only sim simplifies the whole workflow in dynatrace uh, but it also power the davis to do the, the uh, root cause analysis mm -hmm. so, so that's the reason why we have this in place and the coverage for the cloud services uh, um, uh, will grow by the time Good. All right. So if anybody has questions later on, I'm pretty sure you find a way to find us. Uh, you have our names. That means it's easy to get our emails, but also uh, there is on the community answers.dynatrace.com. That's a great way to get your questions. Uh, reach out to your D1 team, uh, especially Mikael, as you said, that people that want to get this enabled, reach out to D1 uh, for any upgrade um, steps that might be necessary. And uh, yeah. Other than that, thank you so much. And thank you, Andy. I'm pretty sure we'll have you back soon with uh, more exciting features. Definitely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.